there's more to yesterday, significantly more. Um, Bob and Laurel, just down two, do two doors down here, they're in a bad way. I've talked about them before. Uh, they are an older couple um, whose health is failing fast. I would say not by virtue of their own neglect, not, not helped by their own efforts. Um, they don't exercise at all. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just putting, putting it in the context, right? They, I mean, they don't exercise at all, and they just eat junk all the time. Just, I mean, just sugary soda, drinks, candy, snacks, crackers, um, and they, 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 they eat out, and they just, I mean, it's just a big, I mean, it's just the, the way that they live. Oh, and now they're paying the consequence for that, um, in, at least in part, right? I mean, it facilitates that, right? I mean, yeah. And I'm only saying that not by way of trying to throw any shade their way. I'm saying that more as a cautionary tale. I mean, it really causes me to rethink every every little cheat and having like a little chocolate bar, you know, left over from Halloween or something like that. You know, th these things pay a price. So, anyway, the roosters have come home to roost, so to speak, and they are both going down fast now. I've seen this coming. I've talked about this on this meditation and other videos and on my blog posts and my journaling, journal writing, which I is a public journal. Um, and they don't see it coming. They don't see it coming. They maintain this idea that they're going to travel and see the world, but they don't take care of themselves. And they're, they, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's really, it's really blinders on. I mean, like, like Laurel has a growth going on inside of her, um, probably cancer, but she won't get it checked out because she doesn't want to know what it is. And also, I won't go into this, but they are just, they have a whole host of just truly awful diseases. I mean, class A, if there is a class rating, I mean, class e, any one of these things would be, is showstopper, game over, you know, the type of things. And they've been piling up slowly and they refuse to seek any care they have no children they have one friend who's even older than them and uh, she lives down the in, in the next city over in costa mesa i've gotten to know them uh, her as well and they they it's like it's like they're driving a car to, towards a cliff and they don't they don't they refuse to touch the brakes they refuse to veer aside they refuse to even acknowledge there's a cliff and now they're at this now they're at the precipice Bob's in the hospital now, and he's probably not going to come back. Um, but the best best case scenario for Bob is that he's going to wind up in a convalescent home. And I used to work in convalescent homes. Um, for a lot of people there, that's where they go to die, right? Some of them, some of them come out, but I don't think Bob's coming out um, of this one. I, I, again, I won't go into too many details. I don't want to trespass on their privacy too much. So Bob's out of the picture, and that's... That's probably happening. Laurel is still over here. Um, now she's got the friend in Costa Mesa. She's retired, but she's older too, and she's not doing so well. She's over here every day. Uh, she parks her car, and then she's in and out taking care of stuff, facility. So she's kind of like being that care, but she's not going to be able to keep that up for very long. She's old herself. Um, yesterday, last night, after I came home from the beach, I found her puttering around in the dark in the parking lot, and I went over and asked her how she's doing. Um, because I, they know me, I'm, I'm helpful. I talked to Bob every day when he, when he was here, because he would pass through by this window, going back and forth to go out to get fast food for them for their for their meals. Like I said, and um, she said she had lost her keys. We searched, we done, we went through the garbage, pulled all the garbage out, spewed it all out on the ground, searched, couldn't find the keys. They let me in the house. I went in, and oh, it's a disaster. Um, and uh, we couldn't find the keys anywhere. So the friend agrees. The friend's as close as they've got to a custodian. Now, Laurel really can't make her own decisions anymore. She's suffering from Alzheimer's. Although when you speak first speak to her, she doesn't seem like it. She seems pretty aware. But 10 minutes later, whatever you're talking about is gone, right? Um, so she really can't do it. So um, I didn't. I didn't know where that line was and ever since the friend stepped in I was about I was at that line about a month ago two months ago and I really wasn't know what to do I even made a comment on my social media asking for advice uh, and then the friend showed up 
friends seem to have everything under control. But now, clearly, the friend's having trouble, too. She's old. She can't find her keys. She's it's way too much. She can't handle it. Now, Lord, now Bob's gone. He's not coming back. And Laurel's by herself. And it's you see the disaster, right? So I talked to her last night, and I said, I would like to call social services uh, and also the um, <clears throat> Huntington Beach Police non-emergency line <clears throat> because there have been four, at least four incidents that the firemen have had to come to to really fall and they can't get up and uh, so when I talked to the firemen I said what options do we have and they told me about the non-emergency line but I hadn't pulled the trigger on that because the friend was here and I thought she's a lifelong friend like and so and the irony is that, that Laurel and Bob were here remained in Huntington Beach they're from Oregon uh, because they wanted to be here to help the other friend through her last stage <laughs> it turned out to be the reversal so anyway, I'm going to do that today. I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to the social, uh, Orange County Social Services Adult Protective Services, and I'll reach out to the non-emergency line, and I'll see what I can do to help out to facilitate that. Also, I've, I'm on a short leash uh, since I'm here all day mm, with, a, with a texting, so I can go over and pop in. It was good that I was in the house yesterday. Literal told me come over anytime, um, you know, just open, just knock and you know, open the door, um, and uh, so I'm here. I'll do what I can, and I'll get get social services helpful. I've gone on and on about this. This has been uh, a, also in addition to being a tragedy, but hopefully something we can then mitigate through getting both Laurel and Bob into long term help. Um, it's also a cautionary tale for a couple of reasons. One. Um, my mom is on that verge as well. She's 86 years old. She's still doing fine. Um, and But the challenge there is she doesn't want to have anything to do with me. So she won't even answer my phone calls. She won't even answer my phone calls anymore. Um, so it's hard to help someone that refuses to have you in their life. But I, but it's my filial duty. And, my, and I want to be there for my mom. I appreciate her. And even though uh, um, she doesn't want to have me in her life, I do want to be there to help her in it in any way that I can. Iro ironically, though, it'll be strange. You might think, well, Kurt, you're going to Japan. How can you help your mom? Ironically, I'll be more available to help my mom from Japan than I am here. Uh, because what will happen is, um, in the short term, if something happens and my mom needs me, in the short term, my brother, who's here as well, can, can help. But he's got small kids, so he can't help too much. Um, I will be on a plane back. Once we get settled over there, we've got a place we're retired, got retirement income, I don't have to work anymore, then... I can be on a plane and come back, and my mom's got a two-bedroom place. I will force my way into her life, uh, uh, lawyers and paperwork, whatever I need to do. Boy, if she heard that. And I will live at her place, and I will care for my mom and get her to do whatever I need to do. This is practice in a way, I guess, for that. Um, the third thing that came out of that was the very sobering realization that you know, Miko and I are within a decade or two of being in the same, maybe two, decade or two, of, depending on how things go, um, uh, being in the same position ourselves. And we've, we've already disabused ourselves of any idea that we were going to live out way out in the countryside. We had originally thought that maybe some little farm deep in the Izu Peninsula. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want to be so far away that no one can help us and that we have no access to services, especially when we can no longer drive. So that's going to refine our home search. Now, the number one home we want in Japan would fit work that, although Yumiko was saying yesterday after I told her all of this, she was saying, well, maybe even that one's out because it's about a, three kilometers from uh, the nearest supermarket. Hmm. We've got an ace in the hole. I won't talk about that ace just yet, but we have an ace in the hole that we can talk about. We have a, a way to, for the family to come together in the end. Because it really is just, there's really not much left of our family at this point. Um, on the on the on the Japan side, Emily will be really the last, the last man standing, so to speak. Well, so the rest of us are going to have to come together in old age, get ourselves into a place that is accessible, con convenient, and then also you may go. Now we're talking about we need to ha plan our, our, not just our you know, final plan, you know, how to dispose of our you know, corpses, 
you know, and so that Emily's not a, that's not a burden to Emily, but also um, what to do once we're too old to be able to take care of ourselves. How we, you know, find some old age home in, in there in Shizuoka that we can then plan. Because the good thing is that we have a good steady income for the rest of our life. Yeah, so we can, and, and the money uh, works well. Coming Money coming from America, at least now, works well translated into yen. So we can find ourselves a nice little retirement community somewhere that can, uh, in Japan or something like that, that can, uh, you know, we can check ourselves in. And say, well, we're done, we're checking out before Emily has to come check us in. <laughs> Big day yesterday, and a lot of those thoughts. I've gone on and on, but I'm glad I was able to talk all this through.